the last part of today's videos are going to be about using actual shapes to do this multiplication. It wants you to find g. g is over here on one of them, g is on the bottom for this one, g is over here for this one. But the thing is, um, for at least in this 2020-2021 school year, you students haven't learned the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to tell you the Pythagorean theorem. The formula for the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so if you take something and we're going to label it the letter a and you square it, you add a different thing and you square it, you should get a third thing and square it. Anytime we have a right triangle, a shape with a right angle, we can label that shape a specific way. A triangle always has two sides that are shorter than the third side unless it's an equilateral triangle. In using the Pythagorean theorem, it doesn't matter which of the two shorter sides are which variable, but the thing is, one of these shorter sides needs to be the letter A, and the other shorter side needs to be the letter B. The side that is the longest is called C. C is also called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse's definition, I guess we could write that somewhere else, the definition of hypotenuse can be the longest side of a right triangle or you could describe it as the side across from the right angle of a right triangle. I keep on saying the word right triangle because this formula and these rules only work with right triangles. If you have a triangle that's different, that's not a right triangle, like if you have a triangle like that where it has an obtuse angle, then that one cannot use the Pythagorean theorem formula. So the main part is the short side can be A, the short side can be B, it doesn't matter which one's A or B, just as long as the hypotenuse is C. So now let's look at number 12. We have this side, which is across from the hypotenuse, so that's going to be C. We have the number 6, I'm going to put that as B, and the letter G is going to be A. So let me just redraw that. 12, G, 6, C, A, B, and then you write the formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then you just take what you labeled for a, and you put it where a is. g is now going to be squared. We need the letter b next. b is the, letter, is the number 6, so 6 squared. c is the number 12, which means we're going to have 12 squared. We can simplify the 6 squared and the 12 squared. g squared plus 36 equals 144. Then we're going to solve for g by subtracting 36. That means that 144 minus 36, which is equal to 108, is equal to g squared. And here's something that's new, is that if you have something that's squared equal to a number, the answer is going to be if you square root both sides equally. If you square root both sides, you already learned earlier in this lesson that a square, a square, and a square root are opposites. So these two things balance each other out, leaving us with g is equal to the square root of 108. And the purpose of th these videos is so that you can break this number down into its factors. 108 is 9 times 12. 9 breaks down into 3 and 3. 12 breaks down into 4 and 3. 4 is 2 and 2. So we have square root of 2 squared times 3 cubed, 
we have a pair and a single pair with one left over. So that's 2 times 3 times square root of 3, which is 6 square root of 3 is equal to g. That took a long explanation, but let me do number 24, and I'll show you that it's pretty quick once you get the hang of using the formula. So in 24, I'll change to purple. Let's make this a. The other leg is b. And the side that's across from the hypotenuse is c every single time. 2 square root 2, 4, and g. g, 2 square root 2, 4. It doesn't matter the way your triangle looks, just as long as you put things in the right spot. So this is b, a, c. You write the formula down. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Then you're going to replace a with what a is equal to, just like using regular substitution. 2 square root 2. But notice, that's two things that are multiplying that are equal to a. So whenever you plug in for a, you have to make sure that you group those things together, and then you square it. You add on to that the number 4 squared, because that's what b is equal to. Finally, we have c, which we're going to square, and c is equal to g, so instead of putting c, we write the letter g, we square it. 2 square root 2 squared. So what you could do is you could distribute this exponent to each one. I told you there's multiple ways to do it in that other video. This is one of the ways. Square root 2 squared plus 4. Oh, 4 squared is 16 is equal to g squared. 4 times the square root of 2 squared is 2 plus 16 equals g squared. 8 plus 16 equals g squared, 24 equals g squared. To solve for g, we need not squared, we need regular g. So that means we need to square root both sides. The square root of 24 will be equal to g. But 24 breaks down into 3 times 8. 8 breaks down into 2 cubed. I did that one fast because we see the number 8 all the time, and I know it's going to break down into 2 cubed. So that means that g is equal to the square root of 2 cubed times 3, which makes 2 square root 2 times 3, which is 2 square root of 6 is equal to g. I'll give you another video that shows the Pythagorean theorem, but on an easier level but it's not bad. 10 is across from the right angle, so that would be C. This one can be B, and this one can be A. You're going to plug them into the formula, and then do a square root at the end. It's real easy.